Welcome to part five of the Tenable Vulnerability Management Series. So today we're gonna to jump into creating some Nessus network scans. So let's go ahead and change over here. And what you saw in the previous videos is we created what's called a Nessus agent scan. And here we're gonna to go to menu and then scans. And we're gonna do what's called a network scan. So agent scan is like something you're doing on the machine. Network scan is basically, these are scanners that are located out in the internet and you're scanning towards people's public facing domains and IP addresses and stuff like that. So let's start off here. Go ahead and put my camera back here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to menu and then we chose scans. Now that we're here, you're gonna see the basic network scan. Now, if you're just, just getting started, this is probably gonna be one of your best options, okay? So we're gonna start off, we're gonna just call this uh, test um, basic network scan. All right, and then we'll add a description right here. All right, whatever you choose there. Uh, we're gonna leave the default options right here. So show results and stuff like that, my scans. And then for the scanners here, we're gonna choose the Tenable cloud, cloud Scanner. Because what we're doing is, we're actually scanning towards things that are publicly facing or things that be, can be seen from the internet. So that being the case, we're gonna use the US Cloud Scanner. Now, if you're in any of these other areas or regions and stuff like that, you may wanna choose the scanner that's best for you. So if you're in the UK, then the London Scanner may be best. So make sure you check that list. Once you've done that, we don't really wanna do any tagging or stuff like here. So then once you've completed that, you wanna put your targets. Now you can put your targets in multiple ways. So let me see if I can zoom in here just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better, okay? So if you notice on the target list, see if I can adjust this. All right, it's gonna show you the syntax here. And so right, there we go. All right, I think we can see it right there. So you can put it in like IP address, so 192.168.1.1 through 192.168.1.255. So you can do a range from like whatever the first few octets, 192.168.1 and through one, through certain numbers, through 15, through 20, and it'll scan one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sequentially. You can also do what's called a CIDR notation, which is this. This is a slash 24. So once again, if you don't understand networking, I strongly encourage everybody, I got a link to Juniper training like five hours of free Juniper training. That's some of the best networking training on the web. Send me a message if you didn't see the link, if you can't find it on my channel, and I'll post and I'll respond with the link to that Juniper training, but it's absolutely free, no strings attached. But you can use CIDR notation to scan an entire subnet, or you can do a host.domain.com, something.com. So in my case, it would be just maybe technology interpreters. .com. And you're gonna put the domain in, and when I scroll down here, you can choose your schedule. So I can do a scan once, but typically, like for instance, in the company I work for, we do daily scans because once again, your bad actors are scanning daily and actually they're probably scanning multiple times per day. All of your domains, subdomains, everything that they can find. And then of course you choose your time and then you can choose your time zone. Now you can choose Eastern, like Eastern is here. So a lot of times you get, you know, for Eastern time zones, sometimes you choose New York, but there is US Eastern, US Central and stuff like that. So you can choose those time zones. And then here you can have it to send you a notification when the scan completes. You can have it send you a text message. And then permissions, you wanna basically choose can edit if you want other people within your organization, other administrators to be able to see it. If you don't want them to see it, you can choose no access or view access. Uh, you can also choose so they can just run the scan, okay? So they can edit, they can execute it, they can run. And so those are your basic permissions here, right there, and make sure you can all see that, okay? So let me go ahead and zoom back out a little bit. I wanna go back full screen here. And uh, with that, that's covering most of your options like when you're beginning. Now, when it comes to discovery, I do wanna cover some of these, okay? So it gets a little bit more detail. Now notice that when you do a scan, and a lot of people probably never look at this tab, you can choose port scan, right? And it chooses common ports. These are ports that are commonly used. But if you're looking for something that's really like, you know, like, like really what bad actors will be using or are looking for, you probably don't want to scan common ports. You probably want to scan all ports. Okay, so remember that's the option under discovery. And then you can choose custom where you can go in and specify the details. Not going to really get into the details. I don't necessarily use a lot of the custom. Uh, a lot of times we kind of use the common ports and uh, you can use all ports. So for assessment here, you have options here. And so you can search, like you can scan for known web vulnerabilities, all web vulnerabilities, quick and then complex. And once again, when you change the option, notice it gives you a description here of what each of these means. So be sure that if you're on the job and you get tasked with doing something that's and you're new to this, then these options are available so you can look at those. 
but then also we can look at reports and let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit to kind of help a lot with these. I know it's difficult because a lot of you may be watching this on your phone. Okay. So then you can go to reports and you can see what we have here in reporting. I'll see if I can adjust this out just a little bit so everybody can see this. All right. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. So you can overall normal verbosity. Verbosity means how much this spits out. You know what I'm saying? So it can like when you do when you run it, basically, you can tell it, I want you to to I have limited disk space report as little as possible or I can report as much as possible. You can get into some of the output options. I don't really get into a lot of these and specifying these. But once again, when you're talking them on, there's good documentation that you can kind of read through. But at least I want you to understand and know that these are here, right? These options are here. Then you can go to the advanced tab. And what you can do is if you're on low bandwidth, you can choose history. And once again, it describes that you're simultaneously scanning two hosts max kind of gives the details there or you can go into custom where you can really specify the details of the span of the scan and a lot of cases most of this is not going to be needed default is going to be fine for you and then credentials this is where it gets a little bit more complex so a lot of times if you're scanning from the outside say for instance you have a public facing website or something like that that you have a login screen to then you can go through here you can actually configure it so that you can actually log in and that's something i'll get into a little bit more like a little bit later in the series a little bit more on a complex size but basically you can specify different credentials and stuff like that have tenable log into your website log into your contact form log into various things right there and actually interrogate those uh those for you okay and so honestly those are the basic options and so once you've kind of gone through and configured everything i'm going to go back to full screen again at this point let's max this out and so once you've kind of done all of those options, uh, you can go back and you can go ahead and click save down here at the very bottom. OK, so we can go ahead and save the scan. I'm not going to save the scan because I've got several already created, but that's going to basically get you through your first network scan. We may talk a little bit about the advanced network scan, but basically it's a configured scan without using any recommendations. OK, I don't recommend that you start here. I do recommend that you start here. OK. All right, so that's going to conclude it for the series. I'm going to give you guys some time to digest it. Leave some comments. Let, know, let me know what you think. Let me know if you need any additional assistance. I do want to point out this YouTube channel is for education. It is not a consultant YouTube channel. So some people are asking me like questions like stuff like basically if you want to consult with me, then that is going to cost money. Okay, so, so asking questions in chat that are basically something that you would need to bring in a consultant for your company. Probably not going to be able to help you with those, but just basic questions about the scan and education and learning how to do vulnerability management. I'm definitely happy to answer those on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.